Talk about that today? Oh, That's God. what I said. Real quick, real quick. Or did I ask? Or should I, should I pause it? Should I pause it? Should we I'll wait? talk about it. I, I'll talk about it. I think it was tone deaf. I think it was a tone deaf decision. I don't want to go in the direction that I'm going to go, but I'm going to go there. I am so tired of it's a. <laughs> you want to wait? Wait. No, it's it, it's it's that everyone's always offended, and this goes back to I wonder if this is that's due with sexuality, because there's five women on that committee, and four of them are. Don't I don't do know. It. I don't know if they are. I, I I don't know anymore who was what. But you got Dawn Staley on that committee. Why is Dawn Staley deciding who plays on Team USA? She's not a coach. I don't know. If she's a coach. I have no idea who the coaches. You think I follow that crap? Do you? Who the hell the coaches? I don't know who the coaches are. Does the, does the coach decide who plays for Team USA for the men? No, Grant Hill does, I thought. Yeah. He left, He left. like, let's, okay, let, let's go. Diana Taurasi right now has worse numbers than Caitlin Clark across the board. So she gets a, a Lifetime Achievement Award yeah, to right. be on be, be her sixth Olympic team so, when in her sixth, where four years ago in 2020, she averaged 5.8 points per game. In the Olympics, this is we're gonna give a spot to a forty-two-year-old. He's grandfathered in. I don't give a fuck. In. This is not what this is. This is about your, your, the future of your sport and whether they like it or not. And they're saying, "Oh, the Olympics is not about that." Yeah, you're right. It's actually earned. And Diana, Diana Taurasi did not earn it. Taurasi did not earn that spot. And for those idiots that's saying, "Oh, she didn't. She didn't do. She didn't go to the tryout." If Asia Wilson said, I don't feel like going to the tryout, are you not putting Asia Wilson on the team? Yeah. If Brianna Stewart said, I don't feel like going to the tryout, are you putting Brianna Stewart on the team? Yes. The tryout's bullshit. The tryout is semantics. The tryout, you know, it's like AAU basketball. You already know who you selected. Yeah. You know who your team is. Could there be a person, two, three guys, that you're on the fence with? Yeah. Yeah. You remember, you came to my tryout for the travel team. Yeah. You knew who was on my team. Unless there was some kid that I'd never seen before who blew me away. It's yeah. like, okay, I want that dude as well. And it, it wouldn't have mattered if it was 12 or 13. We could have picked up 14. It wouldn't have mattered. If that guy is that good, I'm taking that 14th kid. Yeah. And you're sitting here saying that the woman who's basically made everyone turn on the television and buy tickets, you're not going to have her play on Team USA. Even Lisa Leslie said, how is Caitlin Clark not on this team? <laughs> I am not the women's basketball expert that Lisa Leslie is. Lisa Leslie played on Team USA multiple times, I believe. I know she played at least once, but probably multiple times. Mm -hmm. The fact that Diana Taurasi made the team as a rookie, because she played as a rookie before she played any but 10 games of the, you know WNBA basketball. Candace Parker was a rookie. Brianna Stewart was a rookie. None of them came out of college with the actual accolades Brianna Stewart won national championships I get it no one came out with the hype of Caitlin Clark yes Brianna Stewart has multiple national players of the year she was the four time M MOP for the final four she played on a fucking all star team in college they always want to talk about Brianna Stewart Brianna Stewart played with McDonald's all Americans everywhere 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 and you couldn't name another player besides Kate Martin who you love who's with the aces I love on that Kate. damn team Okay. The typical person could not name Hannah Stalky. They couldn't name Gabby Marshall. And beyond that, you have no idea who plays on that team. You know, the reality was is that they actually were missing a starter from that team in the final four, in the national championship. A girl got injured in the last game of the season the, on their senior day. One of their better players. People don't even know that. Exactly. People don't even know that. And you're sitting here and, and, you, and you decide, I'm going to put – Chelsea Gray on this team ahead of Caitlin Clark. I'm going to put, I don't want to say it, but I would tell you this. Angel Reese should have been on this team too. Not that she deserved it or earned it, but that you're marketing your 
damn, this is an opportunity to market, market the WNBA internationally. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Carmelo Anthony were all rookies playing on the men's team. It got smoked, but they were rookies. Why'd they do that? They did that to market the future of the NBA. That's the future. This is your future. You have an opportunity to put... Go look at the numbers of 2020s. You can't look at 2020 because it was played in empty arenas because of COVID. It was played in 2021, I think. 2016, the last time they played the Olympics in front of people, the U.S. team averaged 2,400 people to show up at a game, and they played in a 5,000-seat arena, high school gym, basically, in the prelims, in the round robin. In the actual uh, medals here, the, the quarterfinal semis and, and gold medal game, they played at a 16,000-seat arena. They, they put in 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000 in the Olympics. People didn't, people didn't buy tickets. I don't care what anyone says. The Olympics wants to make, it's still there to make money. It's a business. This is, it's, not, it's a business. NBC wants to sell advertisement. So they may not even put the game on television based on that. If, like, or not. Because where, where the Olympics are in Paris? Yeah. Who's going to, who, who, who do you know will sit up at three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning to watch Team USA without Caitlin Clark? And they got a buzz now. They got out the buzz. We are watching. We're paying attention. <sighs> We're tuned in. We're locked in now. Y'all got us. Y'all, y'all, y'all finally got us. Clink, clink. Damn, are you happy now? Y'all got us here, man. We're watching. We're too. No matter if y'all say it's because of, you know, I want to say that it's, you know, Angel Reese has caused more than y'all than than we think that she did. She she did it. She does she's, something. She can still hard. mark. She still grabs she more people than Alyssa Thomas does. And she she's doing her thing this year. She's she's solid. She's having a solid year, despite everything. She's having a solid year. She's having still. She's she's getting rebounds, even though most of them are from her layups. She she's scoring points. She's in double figures. She's she's being solid, but the part about Caitlin Clark that kills me that people are carping on. They be like, well, she's not even she can't handle the physicality. She gets hounded more than any how would I know anybody else could handle the physicality? Because they don't get played as physical as she does. They're not getting guarded eighty five feet up the court. They're not getting bumped and pushed off screens every time. When they don't even have the ball. Nobody else is getting card like they're not getting doubled and tripled team when they don't even have the ball like her. You know why you can do that? Because her team is not as good. So if you put on a team with good players where she doesn't have to have the accountability that she has right now on this bad team that she's on, and she really she's the best shooter. You could put her in the corner. She don't have to handle the ball the whole game. Like she has to do with the fever, she can sit in the corner and <laughs> use her shooting ability, and you can kick it to her because they're not going to leave her. Or if they don't leave, if they leave her, she shoots wide open shots. But who would you rather shoot open shots than her? And if they stay with her, guess what? Asia Wilson is sliding down the middle of the room for fucking layups, guys. Or Brianna, just layups. They're getting that. So the what she has to do for the fever team, she won't have to do for team for the Olympic. She's the best shooter in the league. Off the dribble, yeah. front, wide open. You think they yeah. have to her open? She has to get her shots like she does because how she's being guarded and because they don't run offense for her like anybody else to get her open shots like Steph Curry, like Clay Thompson. She's not getting staggers and stuff like that to get her open. If they are, they're not setting amazing screens because there are a couple people that's on her every freaking time. So imagine her on a team where you can't put all the attention on her and she has to open fucking shots. Imagine what that does for the team. Or if they do co collapse on her, other players are getting layups. Imagine what that does for them. When she doesn't have to bring the ball up the court all the time and handle the rock. Imagine what that does for her or the team. She's amazing. Y'all, y'all are, y'all are put, y'all are overthinking. She, you know, you know how you know that she's better than a lot of these players? Because she's being guarded differently than anybody else in the league. That just shows you. Yeah how good or her impact is on the court. So other days when Steph Curry doesn't score the ball all the time, but you see Draymond gets 12 assists, that's because of Steph Curry. Because they double him, and he passes to Draymond, and Draymond has a 4-on-3. 
that's the situation. And that's the impact. That Caitlin will bring to the team. Did, did you did you I, hear you know, basketball to people because they be all in my and I'd be like, yo, I play ball, I know ball more than a lot of y'all. I, I promise y'all, I should have been a coach in basketball, but it was just that I was good enough to go play professional football. But if not, I wasn't good enough to play basketball at that level higher. But my mind, I guarantee you, is a lot better than a lot of y'all minds when it comes to basketball. My high school coach would tell y'all that I should have been a coach and I could have did it. But I got the opportunity to play professional football at an age where, you know, where I'm going to keep doing it, you know, as long as I can. While I'm young, if I lay on, coaching happens, it happens. But I'm telling y'all, man, the girl is amazing it's, it, and what she brings on the court and how she. I, I, I want to I read. Okay, we're going to talk. We're, we're here. We're, we're going here. Fuck it. <laughs> we're going here. Fuck it. I, I, I can't. I can't do this no more. Like, I. The amount of petty that exists amongst women against this, I'm going to call it what it is, black women against this woman. And and black men. I'm seeing a lot of black men who don't know dick about basketball. And I love the response. The response is always, I've been watching the WNBA the entire time, and I've been watching. Man, if you've been watching, guess what? Guess what? They'd have been making money. Because not everybody who says they were watching has been watching. You guys are lying. Because if you were watching, and all people who say, I've been watching forever, no, you haven't. Because if you were, this team would not be in the red $10 million a year for 27 years. This league would be making profit. But it doesn't, because you haven't been watching. Since 2000 and probably three, nobody's been watching. And over the past 14 years, nobody's been watching. The damn highest viewed game last year was game for the WNBA Finals at 900,000. Caitlin Clark draws that on a Tuesday afternoon playing at the YMCA. Like, we need to stop this. And so when everyone says, oh, I've watched for Asia Wilson, well, maybe you did. Yes, maybe But the reality did. is, 98% of the freaking men in this country and people around the country we're, we're, not. Not. we're not. We were not. We were and not. And you know what? Just because I watch a game here and there doesn't mean I'm an avid viewer of the WNBA. It doesn't mean you are. I am or anybody else. But here is the type of bogus nonsense that I get to read on my freaking in, on my Facebook from a woman I know who says, I'm first off, did you see what her coach did to her? How in the world does no, you have a, a private text to your no, coach and no, your coach tells this to the media as if that woman does not have a bullseye on her back no, enough? You're toned up. You have to be motherfucking toned up. Why would you? She's a savage. She's a saboteur. She's trying to sabotage this girl. Hey, coach. Hey, coach. They woke a monster, and you tell the media that. Do you not know how the people are going to attack her because of that? She's already being attacked. Why would you? Do that? What are you doing? But so this was posted. So that coach, realistically, should be fired. She's a fucking idiot. She's the. She has got to be the. They gave her gold, and all she's done is. <laughs> Shit on it. I don't know what to say about it. it it's it's comic. It's it's almost it's embarrassing that you wouldn't. Do you remember last year when Kyle Lowry was gone for over a month? We do we have any idea what the hell was going? What happened? We still don't know to this. We day. still don't know to this day. You you still never heard Steve Kerr tell anyone what happened with Andrew Wiggins. To you this. still don't know what happens with these guys because these coaches are not stupid. They're not sharing personal shit. They're not sharing text between you and the player. Maybe, but you have this brain dead, maybe, tone deaf coach. Maybe Ten years, fifteen years later, twenty. <laughs> no, the same day. I'm gonna go tell everybody that Caitlin said, "Hey, coach, they woke a monster." Well, guess what? This is like the Kyrie Irving thing. Did they poke the bear? Why would you do that? Is is, Ka is, is Caitlin Clark all of a sudden gonna play better because she didn't make the team? Why would you or maybe that? are you going to give her 25 shots a game and not 13.2? Why would you do that? <laughs> so I have, a, some, I have someone that I know that posts this crap and, and writes, I am confused by this. Ma'am, you didn't even try out for the team. But see, obviously we're tone deaf there because we know why she didn't try out. She was playing in the final four. Why'd they schedule tryouts the week of the final four? The whole, the whole schedule is all But the stop it. And then, so why would you think they would put you on it? I don't know, because they put Diana Taurasi on it, because they put Candace Parker on it, because they put Brianna Stewart on it. You were still in school when the pros had to try out. 
They didn't try out. Miss me with the bullshit. You were also struggling battling the women. You're also struggling battling the women in the league. She had 30 on Friday She's against the women in the league. She's second or th- she's like fourth in the WNBA in assists. Yes. She's like 15th or 16th in rebounds. She's a six foot guard <laughs> and she's 13th in scoring. Yeah, she's struggling so much. If not for the turnovers, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have shit to say. Yes, it's only the turnovers. And yes, is her shooting percentage down? Yes, because she's searching for shots she cannot get because her team creates no actions for her. No. So she's taking 29 and 30 footers on the run to get a shot off because her teammates run nothing for her. I watched. Or, so or she says, her teammates enough to guard them. To like, guard them. They suck so bad. And this was the final word. You think those other teams are going to play nice? This decision was also for your safety? Man, get the fuck out of here. Your safety? Like, this is the type of dreck that I read from black women on my Facebook page. Because my, my Facebook is 85% black. Because I'm a five member of Five Bit Sigma. Rudy, and Rudy has a black wife, guys. My wife is black. My kids are black. Like, like, what are we talking about here? So before you get all offended and say I'm racist, go fuck yourselves because it's nonsense. Because I, if she was a black girl, I promise to God, if she was a black girl, Angel Reese was a white girl, the white people in America would say, you know what? Angel Reese sucks. And the black people in America would say, God, Caitlin Clark's a fucking beast. The same way they're speaking about Arika Agumboale, who shoots 9 for 25 on average. She's a 36% shooter. Did you know up. that freaking she gets Jewel... Lo- she, uh-huh. she gets it up. She gets 25 shots a game. And you know who else? Jewel Lloyd is shooting 34.3% from the field. You like numbers? How about those numbers? Diana Taurasi is shooting worse than Caitlin Clark this season. So this nonsense. It's nonsense. And yet, this is the type of garbage. So I had a, I, I, I mean, I have a, a fraternity brother who's a, who's, a, who's a professor who responded to this garbage. And then I followed up with him because, you know what? I get called names. I really do. I get called names of people I know. Yeah. And, and the same person says, Paige Bukers is better than Caitlin Clark. Maybe she is. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe she is. Maybe. But you know what? Maybe she isn't. And, for you, and, and you know what? Caitlin Clark beat her ass. When it mattered. Uh, the, yeah. same, the same argument you use against Clark when you say, well, Angel Reese won a ring. Yeah, as the fourth leading scorer. As the fourth leading scorer that night in which she needed her teammate who didn't score one point in the final four, semifinal game, to score 22 and hit seven threes in a 17-point game and have their best shooting per- performance of the season that night. It took the best game LSU could play with all to get that. With all and, and Clark had 30 that night. So the weakness, the, the softness, the your safety. Andrea Carter. Oh, Andrea Carter's an embarrassment, man. If Andrea Carter ever speaks it, Andrea Carter's entire career on ESPN has been based on the success of Caitlin Clark. She's two years with ESPN. The two best years in college women's basketball, featuring Caitlin Clark. She said because of the physicality. The physicality of the women of the international game. You're gonna be playing with the best players on the in, in the world on the women's. Na- name game. me one player who plays for Spain. Name me a player who plays for Japan. You don't know. And we don't know good. any of them, and we'll they're never know good. them because we're not gonna watch the damn games no. because Caitlin Clark won't be playing in them. No. <clears throat> the women's committee no, talking about the men's side. Now that's different. They do play physical, but we no the men. But the, but, the, but we, we also them. know that the men are, are NBA players. Yes, yes. Like Robert you're playing, like 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 you're playing Luka Doncic. Yes, on different teams. You're playing Giannis. You're playing yeah. pros, yeah. and and, and they closed the gap. Overseas on WNBA it hasn't. Hasn't got like that yet. God, uh, tough? I don't, I don't know. That was, if if, if overseas was so good, they would have brought all these Russians and all these over Turkish here. people and French people and African players, and they'd all be playing in the WNBA right now. But they're not. It, 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 
There's a few. There's yeah. a few, but largely they're not. I, I, the decision that they made is catastrophic. I'm not gonna say it's catastrophic, but it's a, a, a massive. It, it, it hurts yeah. Yeah, it's the the WNBA's ability yeah. to market yeah. internationally yeah. and the brand. The it's the bigger picture of branding, yeah. and the brand of the WNBA is still not great. And I don't care what shill man comes out and says, I've been watching K- Angel Reese, or I've been watching Asia Wilson, or I've been watching, like, no, you, no, you haven't. You didn't hear Angel Reese's name until the national championship. And by that point, guess whose name we'd heard of a lot? Caitlin Clark had been featured on SportsCenter shooting 30 footers all season two years ago. Before Angel Reese. Before Angel Reese's name ever came in your mouth, because we all know who LSU was. It was Kim Mulkey, the loud, obnoxious white lady coach they said who nothing. wore the wild ass shit. They know it was Kim and they kid. and it was only because Angel Reese decided to do this type of bullshit two inches from freaking Caitlin Clark's face. They were winning after they're up fifteen, but, but, and you had almost nothing to do with it. When people say that, that that changed it. It was like, and no. then you followed her around the court doing it. <laughs> Because like a fucking idiot to do, and, to, her, to do it to her because she was already a name, a made name. That's how you made yourself. That's how you made yourself. It's okay to say that's how you made yourself, but no one knew because when when she transferred from Maryland to LSU, nobody knew who she was. She was a really good player at Maryland. She was. I'm giving yeah. she. I'm giving her her flowers. She was a really good player at Maryland. She was not a known commodity nationally. She became a lot well better known because she went to a better team coached by one of the loudest and most known coaches in the history of women's basketball. And that is what got her on the, on the screen. Yeah. Kim Mulkey got that team on the screen. Because yep. if you had anybody else coaching LSU, first off, she would never have transferred to LSU. And second, they wouldn't have been on television if she did. Uh. But, but Caitlin Clark... Put 5.6 million people on watching her on television in the Final Four two years ago against South Carolina, and 3.4 million watched the game before that with Angel Reese. So where were all the people that loved Angel Reese so much then? They didn't know who she was. They didn't mm-hmm. find out her name until she played Caitlin Clark. And in fact, she wasn't the villain going into the national championship. No, she made herself the villain. She made that herself after her antics at the end of that game, for which. She doesn't. She's not even guarding the woman busting thirty on their yeah, ass. But if you're gonna make yourself embrace it, I don't care. care. Do it. Embrace the villain role. You know what? The Rock did it. Stone Cold did it. Hulk Hogan did it. Everybody's done it in wrestling. And if you play the villain long enough, you become the hero. Yeah. And if you play the hero long enough, you become the villain. Yeah. And Caitlin Clark is the villain for some yeah. people. Nah. For a lot of people. Yeah. Because they think she's being handed stuff because she's white. Or because she's not a lesbian. Or a combination of both. And that they're completely discrediting her entire career, averaging 32 as a senior, leading the country in points and assists, while shooting 47% from the field, and leading two undermanned teams to the national championship game in back-to-back seasons. Undermanned as fuck. Andrea Carter. Let's bring her back up. Andrea Carter picked them to lose in every single round after the first round. Picked West Virginia, picked Colorado, picked um, LSU, picked UConn, and of course she picked South Carolina. I guess she got one right after five attempts. Mm. But that's but that's that's so you got you became famous and known, and now Stephen A. Smith, the dumbass he is, brings these women on his show and now they you keep them on long enough to just try to embarrass you on your own show because nobody knew who her name was and i don't want to hear her opinion on basketball i don't want to hear freaking monica mcnutt's opinion on basketball i don't want to hear chini ogumuke's opinion on basketball men's basketball i don't hear about i don't want to hear their opinions on men's basketball they didn't play they didn't play yeah i didn't play either you don't want to hear mine either but i don't want to hear theirs you know what I did? I coached. I coached high-level boys basketball, and I would take a high school boys basketball team against any freak, any group of 
the U.S. women's national team can go play again. Oh, without Caitlin Clark, by the way, because you won't have that shooter. Take those 12 women and put them against Montverde Academy, and Montverde will beat them by 70 fucking points. Beat them by 70 fucking points. It would be like the, it would be the drubbing of the century, and they'd never do it because it would show just how much of a difference there is between women's basketball and men's basketball. So, so I'm gonna take, I take, so I got to the point before I, I take it for what it is, right? I'm starting to accept it, you know, that I'm gonna see 40% shooters and 38% shooters. Every game. I'm not, I'm accepting it. I'm not gonna fight against it anymore. I'm appreciate it. Um, y'all got me tuned in. I'm watching. I'm, I mean, I'm not an avid watcher. I gotta just go run and see it unless, I mean, Caitlin, Caitlin, this is a need mover. I'll go watch her. And I will watch Reese if she's on TV, but she's not on TV much. You have to buy Lee Mar- Pass. Mar- Marvin paid for the League Pass that he never watches. Pass. I'm not buying League Pass. And it's not on. And now apparently Boozer is on League Pass, is claiming that he watches all of Reese's games too. But yeah. I'm sure he doesn't pay $1 for League Pass. Either yeah, so uh, I, I'm, y'all got me tuned in. I, I am a, I'm going to say I'm a fan. I, I watch it. I'm here now. It's just, I mean, we do a podcast about sports and it's intriguing and we have to talk about it and there's nothing enough for me to watch. So, and and I'm enjoying it, ladies. Keep doing what y'all doing, but don't bite the hand that feeds y'all. Keep keep balling. Cause when I watch and I and 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 Caitlin's not playing or she's playing and I'm watching the other other player, show me what you got. Here, what, what, here here's what's gonna happen. So, so no, so uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Here's what's gonna happen. Like it happens every year in the All Star Game. The Olympics are still two months away. Oh, she'll be on the team. She'll be on the team. She'll be someone's on. gonna someone's gonna get hurt. She'll be on the team. And she'll be on the team. She'll be on the team. And 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 that will hopefully this could have been a strategic move because okay, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hope to give a, cre- a credit and I hope that my mind thinks like theirs should think was that you don't put her on the team initially. Why? Because mm-hmm. you don't want to offend and all these good. petty ass old broads. Yeah, old broads who have been complaining about her and talking shit about her and don't think she's earned it yeah. and yeah. Put, th- put them on. Yeah. One of them will get hurt Somebody. Or, mo- mo- or more than one will get hurt. Yeah. And then there'll be the decision be to be, who do you replace them with? Cause you're going to have to replace them. And now you put, and now you put Caitlin Clark on that team. No matter if it's a guard. Or I don't care what it is. Why is Brittany Griner on the team? She had retired last year and now she's not retired and she's played two games this year. And so we put the woman that was in a Russian prison for a year, who we had to give up a war criminal to get. I know we're going into politics, but Kyrie Irving posts some crap about a book. And that's the reason he can't be on the U.S. men's team. You think Kyrie Irving is better than Drew Holiday? Mm. You think, yeah, you know he oh, is. No, 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 talent wise, but for what you, you, you know, you know he is. He's a better player. Bring, for what they bring to the team, they need. Different people for different positions. I need a better... Bam Adebayo had some level of audacity to say that we don't need to have nothing but scores. We need people that will play roles. Yeah, Bam, we know you're not going to score. <laughs> Bam, we, we don't expect you to score. We know you can't. You can barely score when you're playing in the regular season with the Heat. So it's no problem for you to just go rebound and freaking and play defense. So, so he, he has but, a, but that but that team, I mean, largely is a bunch of old guys. You have to build a team. Yeah, you have to build a team. Drew Holiday is going to play defense. You know, he's going to sit in that stool against when he play against those other guards and that's around the NBA. That's on a different team. You need a Drew Holiday. Do you I mean, what, I mean, Jimmy Butler's not. I mean, is Kawhi have, Leonard going to play? The man got hurt in the playoffs. He probably won't play. But you have enough offense on that team where you know Kyrie. You, you can make but, a but, but Kyrie, Kyrie was not put on there for political reasons. But that's not the reason. You, we are. Right, we get that. It's not because that's of why he didn't not, get make the team. He was not put on there because of political stuff. Yeah. He was Mr. Non-COVID, not Mr. Non-Vax, Mr. This, Mr. That. He's been the scapegoat. I know, I know we've talked about him for bas- for the Celtics thing now, but nonetheless, Kyrie maybe, Irving still, on. player for player, is as maybe good as there notice, is. Maybe they notice what we notice. He's the most <clears throat> consistently inconsistent, but he doesn't have to be consistent in the in the in the Olympics. Like he he doesn't have to start. Like that's the thing. Like they're acting like you put Caitlin Clark on this damn team and then she has to start. No, no she, one says she has to start. No, but mind she, you, even though I know she's better than Kelsey Plum right now. But we know. She's better than Kelsey Blum right now. She's better than Chelsea Gray right now. I don't have to. If you give, if, put Caitlin Clark on that Aces squad. 
put Kelsey Plum on the Indiana Fever. <laughs> if that's the case, Caitlin Clark's averaging 12 assists because she's averaging six and a half right now she's averaging with, 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 with women that can't catch. She's averaging 12 with the aces. She's averaging 12 with the aces. And she's probably averaging 22 to 24 points. That's what we thought was going to happen with Aaliyah. Because I'm watching, because I watched, did you watch the game after? With Aaliyah, and we're finding out Aaliyah. Yeah, we're finding that Aaliyah Boston just isn't very good. Not that did, good. did you watch the game after against Seattle? No, I didn't. I heard the aces? Was. See, that's the thing. They were hoping that people would stay and watch that next game. No. Most people turned it off. I watched it in bits and pieces, looking up and down, looking up and down, and what have you. The actions that the Aces and Seattle run for their best players are good. Are good. They're running plays for their best players. They're running movement to get their best players the ball and get them open. Indiana, I'm watching at times where I'm sitting like, Clark gives up the ball, she stands in the freaking wing, and then nothing happens after that. Nothing happens. She stands there. No one comes to set a back screen for her to curl around. So is she just supposed to run in circles? <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like, Steph Curry doesn't just run in circles. They give the ball. He's out. running off of screens to get open. And when she's not they, with the ball, they run nothing. Play. They ran a play where the three girls ran to her, and then they got the. Uh, that one play. You saw yeah. that play. The one play. Yeah. They ran an action where she kicked down into the, into the paint, yeah. kicks back up. Yeah. Cuts back up to the top of the key. Yeah. Three of them follow her. Girl in the corner is wide open. Hit her three yeah. bucket. That was the first time I've seen them run an action f- involving her. And because of her presence, and that's why she has a teammate wide open. It'll... Make her miss. She's wide open. Yeah. And and that's why when people ask me about better players, sometimes they go, I'd be like, sometimes it's about impact. Your impact can be better than your numbers. And that's that play just shows it right there. But yeah, um, I, I, all right, we, we got. I, I think I think it's a horrendous decision. I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna hope that they're they did it strategically, expecting someone to get injured. Now someone gets injured and she doesn't make me on the team. I, I mean, that's a different story. But to not put her on the team, I, I thought that was a massive mistake. You have momentum from this woman. You and I are not watching the game at two o'clock in the morning if she's not playing in it. Um, like you're not. What time? Because it's eight. It's if it's eight o'clock here, it's two a.m. in France, right? I'd rather watch the local YMCA game. I would too. I'd rather <laughs> watch you, you and Boozer play at the local gym on Friday mornings yeah, at six a.m. Yeah. Because I, I, I can't. You're not going to get me to sit and watch that that shit. You're not. Yeah. No. And if you look at the names on this list, I mean, I could question a bunch of them. I, I don't look. I don't think Caitlin Clark's the best player in the league. Don't get it twisted. I do not think she's the best player in the league. But if you're building a roster. But if I'm building a roster and you're sitting here telling me that because she's on the team, they're not going to win, you don't even have to have her on the ball. No. But if you do, people are going to be wide open all game. And they're gonna, if, and if they're single covering her, she's going to get easy shots. Or, or, or if they're hard on her, she's not on the ball, and she's in the corner. They're not leaving. open. They're not leaving her. So other people are wide open. Like, can you imagine dumping the ball into Asia Wilson with single coverage? Oh, and you can't God. double down on her because Caitlin Clark's in the corner? Yes. Like, oh, my God. God. Like, it, Next step. They, oh, Lord. they blew it. They, they blew it. But you know what? It's, it's, not, it's not a surprise. This is how this entire women's basketball shit is marketed. It's so marketed weird. like trash by people that never went to school, clearly, for Marketing 101. And they have no interest in making money. Their concern is other nonsense and keeping people's feelings happy. So that's that's what it comes down to. Now. I, I I've given up trying to figure it out. I mean, I know what it is. I don't. And but her coach, God. Yeah. I, you 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 that coach. Yeah. All right. I'm pretty sure by Wednesday we'll have a lot more to dive in on this topic about because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot more statements coming up from different people and we have to dive in about it but for absolutely tonight, we will be wrapping it up rudy we're supposed to be on there for 20 minutes we have well you to... asked the question about Kayla, but know, that was your fault I, I did it to myself but i'm about to go in in the room with my walk with my fiance and rub up on her tonight no you're not you want to sleep anyhow yeah, yeah but i'm still gonna try you gotta to be up at 5 a.m dude um so yeah that, that wraps it up for us for come on now the podcast a special edition of uh, game two 
game two <laughs> recap slash Caitlin Clark explosion. Take, we'll see you on over. Wednesday. They're huh? taking over. They're taking over. They're taking over. They are getting what they want. We're talking about it. We're here. Keep us, yep. keep us locked in, baby. Keep us we'll here. see you Tuesday. All, All right, right, man.